welcome to my sector of the universe. This is Jess from Capella Wellness, here to help you step into your truth and start into your power. For those of you who've never been here before, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. For those of you who are returning, thank you for re coming back to watch another one of my videos. If you haven't subscribed and you're watching my content, go ahead and put some love into the channel, to the work that I do. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know what's coming next, what I'm putting up there. Um, <clears throat> I would greatly, greatly appreciate you and your support. Um, to my Capella members, as usual, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Anyway, this is a Divine Feminine check-in for January 2023. It's a little late. But my guides are telling me, just why did you even do that? It's not late. It's coming in at Divine Timing. Um, these are meant to get out before the beginning of the month or ahead of time. But circumstances, what they are. It's coming out now, all right? So we're going to look into, oh, by the way, there is an extended for this check-in, okay? I will talk about what the extended entails at the end of the reading. The link to the extended is in the description box below. Okay, so what we're going to do, feminines, is we're going to look into what your current energies are, what you're working on, what you're struggling with, and then we're going to get guidance on how to best navigate these energies or whatever else spirit wants us to know. Okay? So, and remember, if you are mainly a masculine watching this, this is also for your feminine energy. Okay? We all have feminine and masculine energy within us. All right, Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, Plain Syrians, please read us for highest good. <clears throat> what are the current energies for this feminine collective? Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families. Wow. Okay. Spirit has spoken and it turned. Hold on a second. They said I need to put this light on. This candle back on. Give me a minute. You know what took out the flame? The Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords took out the light. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm getting a huge hit with that, and some of you probably just did. Now, I'm going to speak in a way that I... So, I always channel two different groups, so we'll get there. But my guides wanted me to look at the card that took out the flame, and it's the Queen of Swords. Watch the shadow side of this energy. Watch it, okay? If you are this, okay? Calculated, controlling, you're very harsh with your words... You have no compassion. You have no patience. You have no, like, what's the word? Um, understanding? You're dimming your light. Okay? That's what a distorted feminine does. And then your distorted masculine comes in and starts wreaking havoc on your masculine or people or whatever that is. So be careful with that energy. We have the Eight of Wands. Energy shows I'm getting like a lot of fieriness, passion, like rapid communication that's coming from a low place. But that's for some of you, not for all of you. We have the world completion. I like that. Three of Swords. Heartache. Ah, feminines. Bottom of the deck is the Nine of Cups. Satisfaction and wish fulfillment. Okay. The overall. Okay. Now. I've got two groups of feminines here, <clears throat> all right? So what I'm getting from this, feminines, is for some of you, you are operating for the, from, as the queen of swords, the shadow queen of swords. Now, this may have been past energy, okay? This may have been past energy. You have to be honest with yourself and your situation, okay? Because when you're not in your integrity, and you're not your authentic self, you're not a divine feminine Christ. Plain and simple. Because you are the opposite of that energy. Okay? You have the divine feminine within you, but when you are coming from a place of aggression and control and trying to power, manipulate, especially with words or, 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 or like you're just strategically planning something, and you're trying to force the masculine to do something, to say something, that is not divine feminine Christ, okay? We want to get away from that energy. 
Yes, separation is tough. Yes, there's a lot of pain and suffering. Yes, there's heartache. Yes, there's sorrow. Especially because a lot of you are in separation right now. But separation is preparation. Separation is necessary for you to grow, learn, evolve. That separation is preparing you for other disappointments and heartbreak that you will come across in your mission work and in your joint mission work when you are in permanent union with your person. We got to get out of this mentality of it's just me, 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 or uh, it's just me and my person and that's it. And, you know, it has nothing to do with the collective or anything, anything else. No, it deals with all of us. I talked about this in my my twin flame support group session just last night. I'm recording this on Thursday. I had it yesterday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, the uh, January 18th. Okay. I highly recommend that some of you <clears throat> join that. And while it might be blunt truth coming from me, all I speak is truth because I'm in my divine light. I'm my, and operating from my divine self. And sometimes that truth can be hard to hear. But if not, I'm not speaking that. I am not a true light worker. I am not doing what God has asked me to do. Okay. So some of you are kind of looking at the 3D world of this is what I'm sensing because some of you are the shadow queen of swords because 3D world is right here with the three of swords separation 3D separation is an illusion. And I'm pretty sure some of you have heard a lot about that. That's the truth here. You are in a divine connection. It's not a worldly connection, meaning more 5D than 3D. you got to start better understanding this, all right? And also with the separation, now they're having me look at the Nine of Cups again. This is about your fulfillment. During separation, you are learning to better understand what makes you happy. It's not communication from your person. It's not your person showing them your true selves right off the bat, or initially they will get there, but there's something about communication with this Queen of Swords and the Eight of Wands here. Wanting communication. I need my masculine to talk to me. I need them to tell me the truth. I need them to tell me this. If they are not ready to tell you the truth, they are not ready. If you are not ready, Divine Feminine, to receive the truth, then you are not ready. This is a God-ordained thing. God is the one who's going to determine when the masculine's ready to be their authentic selves and to speak your truth without hesitation, without beating around the bush. Matter of fact, um, what's it called? No bullshit, Okay. But the thing is here, ma ma uh, feminines, is that your masculine has some dark truths to tell you. They have some hardcore truths to tell you. Because if they don't tell you that, you cannot build your connection off a solid foundation, foundation or off of trust or off of truth. Everything's got to be laid out on the table. All the cards. You cannot be having a card in your back pocket because you're still hiding something. And when both of you come into permanent union, when the masculine is ready to talk, and now the other group, they are. And you, so the other group is divine queen of swords. You are in your divine feminine power. Divine feminine Christ's power, not distorted. You're going to be ready to receive that truth. Truth. The feminine receives, learns to receive. That's part of a lesson there, right? I know it's been a huge lesson for me <coughs> to receive because more than half my life I gave too much. So the feminines, with regards to you wanting this communication and the truth and like you got to come clean, you just got to like, I need to see you. I need you to tell me who you really are, what's really going on, you don't. When you build up your intuitive skills and your telepathic skills, you will know what's going on. You will not need the literal verbal communication to make you feel better, to have you know what is going on in their world. Because remember, you are learning to have that feeling about this connection. 
All right? Because a lot of masculines have trouble with communication with their throat chakra for a reason. We've gotten so caught up with regards to relationships, and it's not just with the counterparts. It's like we get a message from somebody, a text, and we're expecting them to respond, somebody to respond to us right away, or like we send a text and we're expecting somebody to respond to us right away. What's the rush? Eight of swords, F C's. Eight of wands, what's the hurry? Eight of wands is I want it now, it's gotta come in fast. I need to get something from you now, you don't. That is distorted feminine energy and that's also that masculine energy coming in where where uh, when call it, in Spanish they call it uh, 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 tener prisa. It's like you're in this rush, you're in this hurry, and you just you have to go 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 go, right? It's also a lesson for the masculine too to be patient, because that's him coming into the feminine energy. Okay, we're not here to speed up things. Again, we've all heard this before. Amazon Prime Society, the microwave. I got to put it in for two minutes and it's ready and done. You do not put something in your microwave and it's done for two minutes. You've got some so, some other, I don't know, um, supernatural microwave where there's no such thing as the time-based fast quickness. There's no express button on it, okay? <laughs> there's no express button on your microwave, feminines. And for those of you who are more prominently masculine, there's no such thing as the express button on your microwave either. You've got an outdated one. Maybe with the one that has the turn dial on it, right? <laughs> um, so during this time period, feminines, you are learning to find the fulfillment in yourself and that you don't need that communication to make you feel satisfied. You don't. I will tell you over the seven and a half years that I've been in my connection with the telepathic communication with my person, and the feeling that I get and these intuitive hits, it makes me feel very jovial. Like I'm in this happy place, but I'm in my happy place on my own. This is self-fulfillment. This is you finding your joy and happiness, which comes from within. It doesn't come outside of you. And it will not come from your masculine talking to you, telling you what's going on. You do not need that, feminines. That's... 3D shit. That's distorted energy. It's 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 not of the divine. Okay? When God talks to us, do we get a text message from God? Do we need a text message from God? Do we need an email from God? Do we know when we're talking, when God's talking to us? Maybe some of you feminists may need to really work on those, those uh, skills with you aligning yourself more with God, with your higher self, to know when God's talking to you and when some other spirit is talking to you or not. Because I know for me, when my relationship with God strengthened, he would give me very powerful messages and I utilize these messages in my teachings, in my readings. Because without that connection, I don't have anything. Without God, I don't have anything. Without God, first, you do not have union you do not have something solid a very um supportive triangle the trinity god masculine feminine i've said this in my readings before okay for a while some of you may want to go back to my older feminine readings that i was doing last year because it's there somewhere and i know some of you who are paid members of mine your capella members i've talked about this before in my sessions, okay? God is everything. And this is also teaching you feminine story separation that God, you're going to seek God and he's going to give you the fulfillment. Seek thee first the kingdom of God. God, essentially, your relationship with God will bring that fulfillment. It will bring that satisfaction to your life and you will feel a lot better about yourself, about the world, about things, about your masculine. You're going through this journey of not communicating with your person, of not spending time with your person to discover what really lights you up, 
what you are really capable of, what you're made of, feminines. That you are stronger on your own than with anybody else. Now, when you are fully in alignment with your higher self, you're in union with your higher self and you're ready for permanent union, that gets augmented. There's a surge of power in that union for a reason. Like the light is magnified a thousand times over. But your light's got to be there first. Emanating at a very high frequency, your wavelength, and remember that Queen of Swords put out that flame. And this flame happens to be in front of Archangel Michael. Some of you may very well need to communicate or pray more to Archangel Michael to help you overcome blocks, obstacles, to help you to be in your truth. You, this Archangel Michael is telling me right now that all of you are very, very protected. More protected than you know. So is your connection. <coughs> okay. But when you put that light out with that low vibrational energy, you're kind of losing that. And then what does that do to Archangel Michael and Raphael and all the archangels supporting you? They got to work even harder. Because you are susceptible to have more of the devil energy consume you when your light dims. And that gets you to push back permanent union. It gets you to get you, it puts you further away from getting into union with self. But more importantly, for you fulfilling your true mission here. With that world card there. <clears throat> this cycle needs to come to an end. The book needs to close on some of you. For getting all irate. And critical in condescending, in belittling with your masculines because they're not telling you the truth, they're not showing you who they really are, they're not communicating with you. Why don't you answer me? Why don't you tell me whatever, whatever? No, no, and no, we gotta take a chill pill. You're disrupting a lot of the collective energy. That's the last thing we need, feminines. We are here to be examples of Christ consciousness. Christ didn't go around chopping people's heads off and being very cold-hearted, having a lack of compassion, having a lack of understanding. And when people came after him, all the opposition Christ had, did he go out there wielding his sword? No. You know who wielded the sword for him? God, the archangels, Archangel Michael. He knew he was backed by God, by the universe. By the feminine, too. The divine feminine. His truth was his sword. His integrity was his sword. That's what Archangel Michael gives to us. The sword of truth, the sword of integrity, of um, light. <clears throat> His truth is of the light, it's of the divine. So with that world car there, feminines, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I had a lot of I was doing so fine today, but again, that truth, that throat chakra stuff, it's been really bugging me, and I don't even have water, and even I tried water, and it didn't help, so there's something with, like, a cycle closing out with regards to you um, flipping the script, and you being your, your feminine, authentic self, not someone that you know deep down inside you're not, because there's, like, a trigger here. And probably because of you being in separation or you being disappointed by not getting something from the masculine when you want it, it's causing some of you to dim your light. Some of you have put it out. 
with this very harsh Queen of Swords energy. And you know what that's doing to the rest of us? The rest of us got to push harder. Your Archangel's got to work harder. God's got to work harder. There is enough that God has to do. There's enough that the Archangels have to do, feminines. With Archangel Michael putting his head on his foot on Satan's head. He's got to push down a little bit harder. We need to support him by getting back to center and getting back to our divine selves. Again, this is a collective thing. It's not just about me. It's not just about you and your person. It's about all of us. It's all of us, feminines. <clears throat> You could also very well be affecting other feminines by dimming your light for the weaker ones. Where they're way more susceptible to dull energy. Where they get to a place of being in their bed for three days and, and not eating and not sleeping and, and like almost like wasting away in a sense. Where they're allowing the devil to take over. They're allowing all of this despair to consume their body, mind, heart and soul. And what is that doing? For the vibration of the planet. It's lowering it. And the ones who are weaker than the rest of us. They feel that from you. And they fall further into an abyss. I'm pretty sure if you knew that person. Or if it was a family member or something. Because remember it's collective. You wouldn't want to do that to somebody. Would you? That you cared about. And a lot of the other people in this collective, this whole world, you, you don't know all of them. But you have an effect on every one of us. And those who are our, in our power already, we feel it too. And we've got to push back harder. And then some of us have to go out there and, and emit more light to make up for the light that some of you are dimming within yourselves. This is not just a divine feminine check-in. It's more of like a feminine collective check-in. Yes, it's with you, but it's with all of us. So something's got to end here. This cycle needs to end. This chapter of some of you with trying to kind of do these calculated things to get the masculine to communicate with you or to tell you something or whatever this is. It's got to stop. It's not helping you, it's not helping me, it's not helping the collective, like I've already said. You're here to come into your divine, like, understand what divine intelligence is. That's what this energy is. For you to learn to be assertive, not aggressive. You can speak your truth, but you don't force it upon you. You don't come around again wielding the sword. The aggressive side of you is coming from also distorted masculine energy. When your fe divine feminine is suppressed. When you're looking too much at the world from a 3D point of view. And the 3D world is there. World and the, and the three of swords. I also have a feeling that third party situations or other readers, other channels, other people in your life are causing you to do this. They're putting things in your head. And when some people or something you read or something you watch gets placed in your head, you get poor advice. And you start doing things, acting in a way that you regret later. When you know deep down inside, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have acted that way. Because you listened to someone who is not coming from a place of true divine energy. You've got people bashing the masculines and say, oh, you're going to have to like speak your peace and curse them out and, and say whatever, whatever. You know, like a, a lot of um, it's cold heartedness, insults, degradation. Okay. We can speak to our, our masculines in an assertive way, but not an aggressive way. 
That's one thing that the feminine has to learn when she gets triggered and she's not getting what she wants from the masculine. Remember, we don't need it fast. There's no express button to push. This reminds me of when I wrote my letter to my divine masculine after my tower moment. I did something nice for him for his birthday and it came back at me in a way that I was not expecting. My guide set me up. It was a massive lesson for me to learn. You're learning some serious lessons, feminines, especially during separation. First, my heart sank and I felt like complete shit. Even though I did something nice, I didn't really do anything wrong. Now, there were some things I probably wasn't supposed to do. I may have jumped the gun, right? Because I thought I was doing a good thing. But my, I had a distorted view of what I was doing. And then he, re he replied after what I had done. And it's funny because I was getting my hair done that day. And my heart just sank to the floor. I'm like, oh shit, I fucked up. And it wasn't me lashing at the masculine. It wasn't me like going out. I wasn't talking, you didn't communicate with me, blah, blah, blah. I just dropped something off in his house for his birthday. A couple of things. I'll just leave it at that. I'll talk the full story some other day. It didn't go well. Let's put it that way. He was a little bit queen of swords in the reverse. But for good reason. There were some things that he was actually being truthful about. And then afterwards, I went home. And I was, I turned into, it turned into anger about what happened. Because here I am like, shit, man, here I am again doing something nice and then it backfires on me. Lesson learning. Because I was giving, giving, and giving to my masculine and not learning. So my guides set me up and they pulled the rug from underneath me. To get me to learn some hardcore lesson. Because I was repeating the same damn behavior and not learning from it. I had this fear, the subconscious fear, because I didn't want him to go away. I needed to like, okay, he's got to be around somewhere. The separation, because I knew separation had to happen. But I was forcing it. Forcing for separation not to happen. That's when it backfires on you, feminists. And then I meditated on it. I talked to God. I even pulled like a couple of oracle cards. I needed to get to center. And I remember praying at my altar at my last house, my other house. God, please, what, what, what am I doing? What happened? What do I do? He's like, God's like, you need to come from a place of divine feminine energy, a place of peace, of compassion. Speak your truth. Be assertive, Jess, but don't be aggressive. Because I could have typed up that letter and been like, what the fuck? Fuck you, fuck this, whatever. You know, you're a piece of shit, all this other stuff. I wasn't even feeling that anyway. I did want to curse a lot in the letter. I'll be honest with you. I'm being fucking honest right now. I wanted to curse him out. You know? I was getting Queen of Swords in the reverse. And I knew that was not the right thing to do. And I got to center. And I said, okay, God. And I asked the Archangels, how do you want me to respond to this? So they, And they told me at what time to go start writing the letter. Because my masculine the next morning emailed me and said, do you have nothing to say? Because I didn't respond to his other email. And I was like, oh my God, he's getting impatient. Or I don't know what it was that he was doing. And my guide said, God said, Jess, my child, wait. Do not react to it. Respond from a divine feminine place not a distorted and that's what I did and they told me Jess at 2 p.m. you're gonna go to your iMac sit at that desk and type and they they said to me we are going to write it for you I asked them to please speak through me in this response without reacting but coming from a place of love and truth that's very hard to balance 
So from what I understand, I believe that I was able to accomplish that. And I said, look, I apologize for what I did, but I didn't apologize for how kind and generous I am because that's who I am. That is me. I'm a very giving person. I'm a very understanding person. I'm very compassionate. And sometimes it hurts me a lot when when I see lack of compassion or I have so much compassion for people and, and the, the world around me doesn't necessarily feel the same way I do about human beings, about the world. But that's a whole other story. And I sent it and I felt pretty good. I was in a state of peace. Distorted Queen of Swords does not come from a place of peace. And I let it go. And then he replied much later. He said a couple of things we both had cooled off. And he had said he was going to give me an explanation. He was going to respond to what I had last said. When I said, look, I just want the truth. I'm not chasing an elusive friendship. If there's nothing here, I will walk away and I will still love you from afar. That's one of the last things I wrote in that email. And I already wrote in the signature that I love them all anyway. But I wasn't going to tolerate this anymore. I'm like, I don't know what this is. So I'm walking away. Eight of cups. I put an end to that cycle where I, I was trying to do things to kind of have him around and have the communication somehow to try to validate me, to try to validate what we had. Nope, it's not how it works. That was when I finally came to my place of power. And I, I'll be honest, I never once came from a place of like dark queen of swords where I was completely chasing him. Like if he would disappear or he wouldn't answer me, and a text message or an email, I'm like, okay, I'll just move on. From what I know from my past lives, I learned that lesson to not chase that much or to not get all belligerent and irate when I didn't get a response or something like that. I'm like, I needed that much communication. No, apparently past lives, I had kind of cleared that more so out than this lifetime. From what I remember... I never was a complete bitch, cold-hearted bitch to my masculine ever. You would have to ask him because everyone has a perspective. But from what I know, I do not ever recall doing that. I, I, that's not in me to like cut people like that. To be that controlling and that condescending and belittling and, and forcing somebody. Why didn't you text me? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I, no. I don't have that in me. I don't. I never did. I will get angry if I'm very passionate about something. Right? Sometimes the passion will turn to anger and then I kind of go, I got to watch that. But I never once, whenever he dropped off several times and all the seven and a half years I've known him, I didn't come at him cold, calculated, complete bitch. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do the bitchiness. I can't. And I've got double air. Gemini, sun, Aquarius, moon. That's masculine energy. That's Queen of Swords energy. I can't, I couldn't do it. Ever since I was a child, I had this tremendous compassion for people. And from the get-go, I had a tremendous amount of compassion for my masculine. It was like, the Christ consciousness was already there within me. But I know now that's because I am in an incarnation of Mary Magdalene. So that explains why I did not turn into Queen of Swords in the reverse when it came to him not being able to communicate. And you know what with that letter, guys, if you don't already know, he still hasn't responded to it. I wrote that letter almost three years ago to the date. It'll In March of this year, it'll be three years since I asked him, I just want the truth. I'm not going to say his name. I just want the truth. 
just explain what this is. I just want to know. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to chop your balls off. I'm not going to do that. I'm coming from a place of love. All I'm asking for is the truth. And three years, almost three years later to the exact date, I still have not received a response. And I have been okay with that. I'm at peace with it. But what's happened is that the telepathy blew up. And it's even stronger than it's ever been since the time I wrote that email. And he's told me some things. And God has revealed some things to me because I was prepared for those things to be revealed to me about some other truths that he will come clean with. And I am prepared for that. And when he comes forward, like Seven of Swords in the reverse, confessions, dropping the mask, all of that stuff, I will not in the slightest bit turn into Shadow, Queen of Swords, and come from a place of anger, bitterness, resentment, and just like, I have no compassion for you whatsoever. What the hell? You're telling me this now or this happened. I can't believe you did that, whatever. No. That is not Christ consciousness at all. We all fuck up. I fucked up plenty at times, feminines, and you've done it too. You've got to be honest with yourself about this. But here's the thing. Do not beat yourself up about your mistakes, about your fuck ups. We are here to learn some hardcore lessons from those mistakes, guys. So if you've been Queen of Swords in the past or you're doing that now, think about this. Look at it how your masculine would look at it if you were in their shoes. You probably have been treated that way by your masculines when they're Queen of Swords in the reverse. Do you like it? No. It's not a pleasant thing. So if you were coming from that, you were completely mirroring your masculine and you were lowering your expectations. You were lowering your vibration to match his lower vibration. You stooped down to their level. But they also have to work on that. You have to work on that. There's no shame here, guys. And don't think for one second I'm trying to belittle you either. That's not it. Again, there's a difference between aggression and assertiveness. There's a difference between the truth and me being forceful and me being condescending with it. I put the truth out there and I added the whole Christ consciousness piece to it with the compassion that we all screw up to include the masculines. We know that they don't really do smart things, but we don't either. And sometimes we think we're doing the right thing when we're not. And I'm getting a very strong energy here that some of you are getting very poor advice to come at your masculines from a place of distorted feminine energy. Can't have permanent union when you're doing that. It's not divine. That's why the union word has divine in front of it. So this is the time for you guys to start finding your own happiness and let go of the need for communication. I tell you, it was hard for me too until I finally got smacked in the ass by the universe my guys they fucking set me up and we, they're laughing we're laughing about it right now my higher self and my team we're still we still laugh about it and i can't be more grateful for that moment even though it didn't turn out the way that it, i had planned it i learned so much from that and when i wrote that letter that was the first time that i was actually being my assertive self and speaking my truth and not being afraid of it and not backing into a corner if he came back lashing at me still. And that was a huge act of courage on my part because when he responded and my heart sank to the floor and I was just, 
I was about to cry when I was under the dryer at the Harris salon. But oh my God, man. What did I do? And I didn't want to say anything. I just wanted to blow it, pretend it didn't happen. That's not a good thing to do either. And my guys told me, wait, wait, just don't write it yet. And like I said, he responded the next day. Do you have anything to say? I'm like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> Patience. I could have totally had a knee jerk reaction. Like, what, what the hell, dude? Just wait. Queen of Swords. What the hell's your problem? Queen of Swords. Nope. My guy said 2 o'clock, Chess, 2 p.m., meditate on this. We're going to help you write this. And I didn't have any ounce of fear when I wrote it, especially when I told him I was walking away. <laughs> that was a massive, bold move for me. But once I submitted it, I didn't even care if he was going to respond to it or not. And, but he did, but he didn't answer it fully. And he still hasn't. And you know what? It doesn't matter anymore. I stopped kind of wondering if he was going to say something. Months, a year afterwards, after the first year passed, I was already in my mission. I was already really coming into my own, into my feminine power. And I got so immersed in my mission, in my mission work, I started to forget about all that stuff. And I found this. <clears throat> I found that within myself. And I haven't heard from him in a long time. There's been sporadic communication, but not like how it used to be when we first met. Like where it was constant. But we talk to each other in the 5D every day. And he... This is where it gets emotional. Because every day, he still reminds me what I'm here to do. It's to teach you. It's to teach others. It's to teach about Christ consciousness. About what this connection really is. Right? And it's hard sometimes. Because sometimes I think my point isn't getting across. And this goes back to the compassion that I've had since I can ever, I can remember. And the big thing for me is the compassion for the masculine collective. Because I know most of what a lot of these masculines go through my abilities are very, very advanced. And this also stems from the fact because I am an incarnation of Mary Magdalene. And I know she weeps for them too. Because for them it's not easy. With all the damage done by the Piscean Age, it's not. And this also comes from Christ consciousness too. Right? Mary and Christ, they were the first... Twin flames, if you want to call it that. And Mary's story got thrown out the window. And Mary had such a huge part in Jesus' healing and in his mission work. But now my masculine will telepathically tell me, and through other people, because my person actually speaks through clients of mine, one in particular. And it helps me to keep going. And I know, I feel it, because I know Mary Magdalene wasn't hurt either. All her stuff, I said, it got thrown out the window. It was hidden. It was sabotage. People said really derogatory things about her. And I feel for her because I, I was there.
And that's what gets me with the compassion that I've had. And that's why over time, he doesn't have to respond to that. I know in due time, in divine timing, he will say what he needs to say when he's ready, when God says he's ready. When God says he's ready. <clears throat> and I have to be ready too. I feel like I'm there. Because God's shown me a lot. And it, it's, it, I've been tested through people saying things to me too. To see if I'm going to back down or hide in a corner or whatever. How I'm going to react to certain things. If people are trying to sabotage me or attack me. <coughs> come queen of swords in the reverse at me. But when you have this state, this, this, this energy of satisfaction. Pure satisfaction and joy in your life. It brings you a state of peace. <coughs> right? And nothing can take that joy away from you. Not even the devil. And the devil does try. He's tried time and time again to do it. And there are times where I would like for somebody, especially for my masculine in the 3D, to kind of like help me cope with it. But the power in it is when he tells me telepathically what's that feeling that I get from him. To keep going, to keep teaching. And it's not just from him, it's from my guides, God, my uh, smaller group of friends, my clients, you know. Because I know I have a very different mission than most feminines do. And this is not to put me in a better place, that's not it. But this is very, because of the Mary Magdalene thing. She got pushed aside. She was not really heard the way she should have been heard. And sometimes I feel that way. But I do know that whoever's watching this, I pray that you listen to this with an open heart and an open mind. And yes, my videos are long. And yeah, I'm not trying to bash the masculine or I'm not trying to, to you know, be all uh, puppies, rainbows, and unicorns because that's not what a true light worker is. That's not what the truth is. <clears throat> And to have the patience to watch these things. If you watch these things in entirety for however long they are, you're well on your way to really being in your true feminine power. Divine, <coughs> excuse me, feminine power. <clears throat> so, I'm hearing the Bon Jovi Better Roses song because I heard the truth is and then my guides were telling me to sing the lyric, not sing, sing. Say the lyric, the truth is, baby, you're all that I need. So I'm having a divine masculine come in through here all of a sudden with that song, Better Roses. And I had some massive, massive, massive epiphanies about that song. And believe it or not, it talks about Mary Magdalene and Jesus' relationship. I will get to that when God says it's time. Those are the types of epiphanies I'm having. Those are the types of messages that I am getting from God. And my masculine sent me in that song a couple of days ago. <clears throat> and he actually helped me to decipher that song more. And that's where I got the Mary Magdalene Jesus thing from my counterpart. This is the golden nugget guys that is what we really want to have that type of connection with them in the 5d to get information like that to get downloads like that to have a better understanding is what we're here to do because you are here to be an example of divine couple with your person like mag mary magdalene jesus christ there is no queen of swords in the reverse, it, the shadow queen of swords in that whatsoever. <coughs> See, the throat chakra stuff. It's like all this stuff wants to come out. But anyway. Understand what is really important. It's your peace. It's your happiness, feminines. It's not dependent on the masculine here. Nor is the masculine supposed to be dependent on you for his happiness or anything else for that matter. 
So the other group of you, <coughs> excuse me, you are already in your happy, happy, joy, joy state. You are your authentic self. You speak the truth without hesitation, without any fear, without any, you don't second guess it. You don't, you have no fear whatsoever for the other group of you when it comes to you speaking your truth. You are your true, authentic self. You don't bullshit. You don't sweeten things. You don't sugarcoat things. Whoever said that, thank you. You don't try to manipulate the truth. You tell it like it is, which is exactly what I'm doing. And some of you are tarot readers. And my guys want to flat out say this. If you know you need to speak a particular truth that you think is going to trigger the feminine, you are doing the feminine collective a disservice or the masculine collective or both. Because I see some of you hesitate and I know exactly what you wanted to say and you hold yourself back. That is also the shadow of Queen of Swords where she holds herself back and she gets a bit reserved it's like, I don't want to speak the truth because I don't want people to, I don't want to lose followers. I don't want to lose subscribers. I don't want to lose whatever. <clears throat> I don't want to pe people to put negative comments in the chat. Guess what? It's part of your purpose. It's part of your the God's plan for you. So some of you who are hesitating and being the true divine queen of swords, now is the time for you to fully come out there and speak what you are being guided to share. It's truth and nothing but. It's divine truth. It's part of the divine intelligence. <clears throat> We've got to get that out there as a collective feminines and masculines. <coughs> All of us, see? Oh, chakra, man. It's getting to me. <clears throat> Time is now to do this. Um, taking action, eight of wands. Swift action. Getting it done. For those of you who are channelers, psychics, whatever, whenever that intuitive hit comes in, you say, it's what happened to me. As I said, some of you are not going to like this. Some of you are going to get triggered. I don't care who gets triggered. I don't care who says derogatory things or tries to throw mud in my face or tries to throw a stone at me. The opposition is part of what I am doing just like Christ, just like Mary Magdalene, just like the disciples. And anyone else who speaks up for the truth too, they get shut down, they get their Instagram accounts, what's it called, revoked or whatever, blocked, YouTube, whatever. It's all those people. But when that happens to you, know you're doing your job. And when people dislike your stuff, People say negative comments. You know they're coming from a distorted place, a lower energy. When people don't like what you're doing, like when I see thumbs down in my videos or whatever, I am now learning to smile because I say to myself, I'm doing my damn job. And God says, yes, you are, Jess. You're doing your job. You're doing what I've asked you to do. A lot of people are not going to like what I do. A lot of people are not going to like the truth, what I have to say, what I'm teaching. But you can damn well know that I'm speaking nothing but God's truth. And I pray to God before I do these readings every time that the truth and only the divine truth comes through me and comes out of my mouth. And some of you are being called to do the exact same thing. <clears throat> and whatever way you communicate to your students, to your platforms, whatever this is.
it's time for this divine truth to be released here. And those of you who are doing it, your life is going to take a sudden shift in an upward direction. A lot of things are going to start happening and people are going to start listening. Because I feel that with this, these astrological transits, Uranus is about to go direct. We're about to have the new super moon in Aquarius on the 21st. I'm recording this on the 19th. Yes, not that dates matter. Time has escaped me. I have no concept of time anymore, which means I am there with Christ consciousness. But anyway, the world. Some of you can be very well world famous for the work that you do because you're speaking your truth. People are going to start listening up is what I'm hearing. Like I heard, you, I heard you're going to be heard more. There are a lot of things that are going to be going on. You're going to get your wish fulfillment, but you're going to get your wishes. You're going to get things that you didn't even ask for. Things are going to take off. Things are going to drastically change. Delays are over. You're going to get communication from your masculine. Those of you who are in your true truth, you are who God made you to be, your true divine self and your alignment with that. You are an inspiration to your masculine to do the same thing. Because now that you are showing the world that you have no fear and showing the world who you are, showing your face, because my masculine even told me, you do not like showing your face. You've done that since the day that I met you. It's an insecurity issue. And he was right. And I owe a lot of this to him because he told me that, that he, I needed to shine my light. I needed to be me to be who I was. He said to me in the video chat recording, be you, be who you are. And he knew exactly who I was before I did. And that says a lot. And he had to do what he did to get me to realize that, to get me to hear. Because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be doing any of this. And I would not be ready for what truths I have to convey when it is time. Because they are big. They are world changing. And I'm trying not to get nervous about it. One of you knows I told you about this because I saw something. And it's a little scary. But God's preparing me for the even bigger truths. And preparing me more so for me to... Speak those truths to the collective and God knows who else. So I know my masculine is watching. I've known for a while. So I thank you for not only saying that to me in the 3D, but for supporting me the entire time up there. Not that you're up there, but you know what I mean. In the 5D, telepathically. You know what I'm talking about. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me in my mission. And for getting me to be who I always was, who you always saw me to be. It's the greatest gift anybody could give anyone. <clears throat> so for those feminines who are there, you're going to get your wish fulfillment because you probably asked, like I said, you wished, you wanted the truth. You just wanted an explanation. You just said, just talk to me. Just, just let me know. That's all I want. I don't want anything else from you but the truth. You're going to get that truth because you are in alignment. Eight of Swords is in alignment. You are in alignment with your truth, which you have inspired your masculine to be in alignment with their truth and to not be afraid of that because they see you, feminines. Speaking your truth without any fear whatsoever. And your light is just like blinding people. So now your person is going to communicate 
to you who they really are and what they've been wanting to say to you for quite some time. And that is going to close out the cycle of separation for good for some of you who are in alignment. It's going to be a very happy time, feminines, because you found your happiness without having to communicate with your person in a 3D. You did what God needed you to do and you found your, you know what satisfies you now. You're satisfied with the fact that you're not getting communication because you know bigger, better things from your person. What the truth as to what everything ensued was about everything. Like you, you learned so much during separation and you are very satisfied with everything that has happened in all your separations to include your final one. So the current energy with you being in your pure state of bliss here, you're now attracted and you're speaking your truth. <coughs> you don't hesitate when that truth comes in. There's a massive cycle ending here because you've learned your lessons about you being your true authentic self and you saying the truth without worrying about it. And when the masculine comes in and maybe asks you some questions or reveals some truth to you, you're going to be very understanding of them and you're going to communicate to them without fear of them running away again, <clears throat> without fear of them coming down on you hard or whatever it is. They might challenge you again. Who knows? <clears throat> But that cycle, separation, is going to end for good because you have completed the hero's journey with being who God made you to be. And fulfilling your mission, speaking your truth, and not worrying anymore about communication, about 3D stuff. So after the Nine of Cups, it's the Seven of Swords. Look, shh, secrets, deception and strategy. I did say for those of you who come from a distorted energy here, you were acting like the masculine to try to get them to tell you the truth, right? Strategy. Strategizing, doing things to try to get them to say something, do something. Backfired. Remember, some of you, you stoop down to your masculine's level. The others of you, you're getting... Your wish is coming true, but there are other beautiful, wonderful wishes that are about to be fulfilled here. But one of them is, I said Seven of Swords, did I not? Your person coming clean. You may have come clean to them about what was going on in your world recently. You may have been very blunt, very brutally honest with your person about what was going on in your life. You didn't sugarcoat it. You didn't beat around the bush. It's like blunt truth. And some of you, it wasn't easy to say because some of you were probably thinking, oh man, what is my masculine going to think now that all this stuff happened or didn't happen or whatever? It depends on your situation. But you didn't keep any secrets then. You, you told your masculine what was going on with you if you've had recent communication with your person. And now you're encouraging your masculine to do the same. To be honest with you, with what was, what's going on in their lives. Or what's ensued since the last time you spent time together or you really talked more often than not. Okay. Wow. The wheel of fortune is at the top of the deck. <coughs> Missed opportunities. Dustin, I'm sorry. The clock. The clock is ticking. Some of you feminines need to start raising your vibration and stop dimming your light by everything I said before. You know what that is. The others of you, it's divine timing. It is now time for you to receive what it is that you've been manifesting, what you've been wishing, hoping, praying for. Some of it, this also re uh, entails material wealth. 
financial stability and security. That's magically appearing in your life here. There's like a supernatural um, inflow of abundance is what I'm hearing. Good luck, good fortune. What was destined for you is now about to come to pass. <clears throat> and part of that is also includes it's now divine timing for your masculine to communicate their truth with you because you've done it with them. You've done it with other people. You pass a lot of tests, like quality checks, feminines. God's there with the clipboard and the white coat or whatever he's wearing. Check, feminine, do this, check, check, check. It's all the stuff that needs to be checked off before you get to union with self is what I'm hearing. <coughs> union with self checklist, divine feminine. Okay, she did this, she did that. Oh, wow, look at that, did that. And then you probably added some more stuff that maybe they didn't think you were going to get is what I'm being told as well. Which is why some of you, you were kind of wishing for things. You were just like praying, like, let me just... I'm trying to manifest this. Oh my gosh, what's coming to you? I mean, it's not just great fortune and stuff, which also ties into your mission work. You're going to be very well known for what you do, and there is money here. Um, but it's more so you fulfilled that part of your prophecy. Now you're ready for the next phase of your mission work. Um, it's now time. It's time for you to get what you've been wishing for for so long. It's now time for you to enjoy life, to sit back and relax, because you put in a lot of hard work into this, but you kept going. You kept pushing, you kept taking action, you kept speaking your truth and you kept putting it out there. <clears throat> You've understood the consequences of your actions, which is also what separation is needed for learning lessons from the hard knocks in life, learning lessons from her mistakes, <coughs> and seeing the humor in it all, and seeing the truth in it all. Some of you have paid off your karmic debt, and now great fortune is coming to you. There's also something that's faded. Some, it's a twist of fate that is happening where all of a sudden things are going to take off and you're going to be like, oh my God, I am beyond blissful than what I was before this stuff came in because now you're in alignment with your heart's desires, with what you've been wishing, dreaming, hoping for because it's time to get those things. The others of you, it's time for you to find your own fulfillment, to find what makes you happy. And it's not the communication from your person. It's not being with your person. It's not them taking action. Do it now. You have to take action now. You have to do it now, 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 now. You got to speak up for your truth, Donald. You got to speak up. Somebody's masculine name is Donald. You got to get out of that prisa, that hurry, that rush energy. The Queen of Swords, aggression. Ah, uh, I can't. Uh, Queen of Swords is not patient. Air. It's the fastest energy. It's faster than all the elements. If that's you, it's time for you to stop doing that. Some of you need to also stop putting out into the 5D. Hurry up, masculine. Hurry up, masculine. Hurry up, masculine. You got to say something masculine. You got to communicate masculine. Now, you may not be saying this to your masculine in the 3D, but if you're putting it on comments, if you're putting, you're writing it out there, you are, you're like, if somebody's setting intentions, I wish the masculine would hurry up. Don't do that. You can't rush God. Oh, my goodness. You can't hurry, love. You can't push God to do things. What do you need, hon? You finished? Okay, I'll check later. <coughs> um, I don't remember doing the assignment though for the science teacher. Okay. It's like 2.05 and it's not showing up on my assignment thing. So I texted her to see if I actually did it. Okay, well just be cognizant of that. Just keep tabs on it, okay? Alright. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you later. No, anyway. <clears throat> we're gonna finish you at one. No. I have to take a break. I have to eat. Anyway. Excuse that. Um, 
<coughs> I heard somebody hurry up and get on with it. If that's you, click off. You don't need to be here. You don't. You need to find patience. I pray that you will find that. But if whoever's telling me to hurry it up and get on with it, go ahead, click off. You can go get your information elsewhere. Because you still need some healing to do. You still need some work to do, especially with your patients. And you kind of being a little bit more understanding here. And understanding that you are getting some valuable information and insight. Not only to your own self, but your connection, your person. Okay? <clears throat> but for those of you who are trying to hurry things up, it's not going to work because everything happens in divine timing. Did I put it back? I did. You need to allow God to do what he needs to do for both you, your person, and the connection. It's always in divine timing. And some of you, your divine timing is now. <clears throat> You're going to be incredibly elated. When your person comes back around, that they come back around as their true selves and they will come to you correct, right? This is doing the right thing. Confessions, speaking truth, not holding back, not being sneaky, not being deceptive anymore. They're gonna be Queen of Swords. No excuses. One. Hey, my feminine, this is what it is. Here's the truth that you've been asking for. A lot of you have waited a long time. But you knew that when the massing was ready, that it would happen in divine timing, you would get your answer. You would get that communication. But from his divine masculine Christ self. Not his distorted self. All right. They now want me to do what is the feminine working on right now? Some of you are working on maintaining, uh, keeping your light on, staying in alignment with your truth. All right, not getting impatient, not trying to rush things. Um, the others of you, you need to work on that. Everything else I just said, let's see what comes out. What does, it, what does the feminine need to work on? <clears throat> third party. I said third party, three of swords. let go of the third party situations if you are being influenced by third parties and you know they are lowering your vibration cut that relationship off if you're getting hung up on coming after your mouth saying, now this is a divorced person thank you holy spirit now what's coming is some of you there's a karmic here that your person is dealing with they need to learn their lessons from their karmic the third party it could very well be for some of you an ex an ex-spouse, or maybe it's your ex that you need to let go of. And I will say, if you are a twin flame, if your divine counterpart, your ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend is not, I repeat, is not your counterpart, is not your twin flame. You can go to God about that if you don't want to believe me. I don't care if you don't believe me, but go to God. Take it back to God and ask him or ask him for confirmation of what I said. Your twin, your counterpart is not an ex. Anything. Ex-boyfriend, ex-wife, ex-husband, ex-girlfriend. <coughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Mary Magdalene was not Jesus Christ's ex. Anything. Neither were any other of the twin flames. 
working on the third party situation. This could also be third party with regards to you not speaking your truth. You still having the fear, especially those of you who are terror readers. And I'm picking up certain channels right now. Really, Holy Spirit? Somebody wants me to call somebody out. And again, I love you with the love of Christ. And I've seen your channel before. And you're one of the ones, when I said, I knew what you were going to say and you held back. And I was trying to push you, but I knew you had already recorded it. But I was kind of telepathically push you for the next time that you go on camera or whatever, that you say what you need to say. The only thing I'm going to say here is your first name or part of the name here is Erica with a K. You are an exceptional teacher. You know a lot. A lot. You got to say it. And it's not just for Erica. It's for all of those others of you who know you need to communicate that truth in whatever form you communicate it in, whatever platform. Do not be afraid of being shut down or being, you know, attacked. We're here to overcome that stuff guys we are protected archangel michael is fighting for us along with all the other archangels and everybody else who's there on our side guys we're all there to support each other the time is now again so if this third party has to do with you holding back all of the truth because some of you say half the truth it's all of it. It's all of it. I'm here to inspire you to not be afraid of doing that. Trust me when I say I hid behind a curtain. I even hid behind my mom's legs when people would come around. When we would go somewhere or something like that. I was terrified of being in the public eye. I was terrified of speaking my truth. I was speaking, period. Go ask my mom. She told me the other day that I've come a very long way. All right? And I'm 42 and a half. It took me 39, 40 years to get to here. Better late than never, right? But there's no such thing as late. It was my time. It was my time. Even though I'm in my 40s, my time is now. Your time is now. No matter how old you are. There's confirmation right there. You heard it. The ding. So third party stuff, whatever this is, let it go. The answer is yes. Use your intuition what that is, the feminines. Yes, it's confirming what I just said. Maybe it's answering yes about, this is for some of you, when I said your ex is not your twin flame, your divine counterpart. And I know there's an ad with somebody going around out there saying your ex. You want your ex from the twin flame back? Uh-uh. Nope. It's not true. And I said, go to God. Ask him. There is your answer. That I am correct. That your ex whatever is not your twin flame. Thank you, Christ. Mary Magdalene, my team, for actually backing me up with that. I was not expecting that. That's what they just said. For some of you, that's what that yes is for. Your ex is a third party, not your counterpart. There's other third party stuff that you're dealing with. And again, if you're with your masculine, dealing with a third party, if this is their ex-spouse, their whatever karmic, they need to deal with that release. I said, let that go. You need to release the third party situation, whatever this is. You are freaking intuitive feminines. You know what this is. This is the time to let go of that shit. And there is somebody here who likes to curse. But does it like to curse on camera? I'm getting Erica again. I love you, Erica. I do. I watch you. You are a badass. But you 
have way more potential than you think you do. But that's for her. That's for somebody else too. If you are afraid of cursing, okay, don't be afraid of that because that's your authentic self. If you have a sailor's mouth and you're a female, by all means, God made that. And I know people get hung up with religion. Oh my God, there's cursing. Jess is cursing. What is this? She's defined feminine. And she's saying all these curse words. <clears throat> Listen to me. If you're getting something from this, if you're lighting up from this reading and you're like, holy crap, like she's speaking truth here. Some of you are being confirmed. You're getting confirmation from what God has told you. It doesn't matter if I curse or not. That's who I am. I suppress that too. Being afraid of what other people are going to think if I had a sailor's mouth. Now, my cursing isn't that bad, but if the F word comes out, fuck comes out, then fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck. Doesn't matter. It's a word. It's a word. And I'm not doing any damage to anybody unless I am calling you a fucker or a fucktard or whatever. That's different, guys. I do not do that, okay? Maybe some of you are calling other people like that. Calling the masculine a fucker, a fucktar, whatever. Fucking asshole. That's derogatory. That's dark. That's distorted. Let go, okay? This could also be you letting go of you being the feminine who's coming down hard on the masculine. We do not need that, please. We don't. Mary Magdalene's like looking at me right now, like shaking her head. Feminines, Jess, please tell them. We don't need that. She's very heartbroken by this, which is why I was crying earlier. I, I've broken down over stuff like this, especially when I see very harsh things about the masculines, you know, especially the feminines giving up on them. Oh, God, I have to keep myself from breaking down to tears. And I start praying for that person, whatever I see. It's hard for me. Because it's not entirely the masculine's fault, feminines. It's not. There's so much damage to that collective. It's stupid. Let it go. If your person's dealing with third party and they're, it's a human being third party, which some of you are dealing with, let them deal with the person. They have karmic contracts to learn. If you're curious, I offer a service that deals with the karmic contracts that you need to close out and your person needs to close out with their third party, whoever that person is, to help you better understand what needs to heal in that contract, what needs to close out, and what they're dealing with. We all have karma to clear, guys. We all have karmic contracts on top of soul contracts. Awakening is the last card. What you're working on. Some of you are awakening up to this truth. You're awakening to the fact that third party whatever is not helping you. It's lowering your vibration. It's dimming your light. It's putting the whole flame out that did not happen by accident. You really, 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 really got to wake up and start realizing what is dimming your light and what is keeping you from physical permanent union. Look, barriers at the bottom of the deck. If you watched my masculine check-in, this is a very different energy than the masculine. Some of you are not in alignment with the masculine. It's the reverse. A lot of the masculines are ready for union. They had the nine of cups too, did they not? There's a mirroring there. Some of you, you are overcoming a lot. It's like I said, you're in your power. You're in your truth. You've healed three of swords. You've learned to forgive yourself and other people. You are now ready to get your fortune, to get your wishes. The others of you, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. You will get there when you release whatever this is. <clears throat> and some of you have done that. You worked very hard on releasing those third party situations, whatever that is. And third party could also be 3D communication, feminines.
what I'm also getting is that, and again, that barrier, you're working on those blocks, those obstacles. That's what I said about Archangel Michael. He's helping us to break those barriers. You were also breaking barriers with regards to your vision with speaking your truth, guys. Don't be afraid of doing it. You will get opposition. You will get chastisement. You will get whatever. People trying to take you down. You are a warrior, feminine. Step up into that masculine energy. And break those barriers. For the others of you, the barriers are you getting caught up in the third party stuff that has to be let go. You need to ascend. You need to rise above that third party bullshit. It's the truth, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. Guide. Your guides, your angels, me even, whomever. They're, they're trying to guide you towards the truth. They're trying to get you to follow your light, to not dim it, to not put it out. Follow your light, your true north here. Top of the deck is action. There are masculines watching this who are in tune with their feminine energy and they're getting ready to take action. That's what the action is the Eight of Wands there. The Queen of Swords gets divine guidance, listens to her divine intelligence, makes a plan, executes it, speaks her truth, whatever it is that she's supposed to execute, whatever she's supposed to say. So the masculines are tapping into that feminine energy with that balance there, trusting their intuition, letting go of the third party stuff, being their true authentic selves, and taking action towards the feminine. The others of you, if you're predominantly feminine, you are working on aligning yourself more with your true self, like fully you, not half feminine it's full divine feminine christ <clears throat> okay this is also about you taking action on overcoming those barriers of that third party stuff for you to ascend for you to wake up to what it is that you are doing that is not helping the collective and it's not helping your masculine either or the divine mass or the masculine collective the action is now i said the time is now to take action and then there's shadow work Okay. All right. I don't even know what the extendant's going to be like. But anyway, I will get to that in a little bit. It's not time for me to talk about what the extended is entailing. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. We're now going to see what the feminine is struggling with. What is the feminine struggling with the most? Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, Pleiadian Syrians, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. I'm also hearing Queen of Light. I know that is a YouTube channel, Queen of Light 1111. Well, that might be confirmation for me. Peace. We talked about peace, your crown chakra. Selenite, Selenite, clear your energies, feminines. Those of you who had the other message where you've got some work to do, and that is okay. We all have work to do. We're always working. Lotus. Awakening. Look how beautiful that is. The lotus flower is all about awakening, coming down from the depths of those muddy waters and emerging out into a surface, showing the world who we are, blossoming, blooming, Every petal, and where all lotuses are different, everything's different. God creates everything unique. You are unique. You're you that you're that unique flower, crown chakra, higher self. It's part of the awakening stuff. Some of you, your crown chakra is blocked. I highly recommend you get chakra healing. I do do that as a service as well. It's very helpful, and sometimes some of the clients have to get it done more than a couple of times. I can say right now, a lot of you guys have your crown chakra blocked. You are not connecting with the divine enough. Your guides, your angels, your spirit team, other spiritual mentors who are in alignment with the truth. Um, 
you're struggling to be at peace. I talked about this. When you are fully joyful and content, you are in a state of peace when you find that within. When you are bitter, angry, resentful, and you're chopping heads off, you're not in peace. Divine feminine is required to be in a state of peace and bliss in order to achieve union with self, in order to manifest permanent union. An abundance of peace. I talk about that this often in my readings. If you haven't watched me before, go start watching my other stuff because this message comes out about people not conveying the importance of the abundance of peace. That's total Christ consciousness right there. Which brings more peace and balance into the world, into the universe. You're struggling to be at peace with yourself to make peace with your masculine. Because for some of you, it's third party shit. We're not going to do that anymore, feminines. You're way more powerful than that. Bottom of the deck is root chakra. Safe. You are safe. You are protected. You, your masculine your uh connection your mission i'm getting and look self is underneath that crown chakra again feeling safe within yourself feeling protected you're more protected than you realize this is growth with the little sprout this is also divine timing things take time to grow we take time to learn lessons, yes, but once we start learning our lessons, we evolve, we grow, we learn, we continue on, we, we make progress. This is being rooted in Mother Earth, which is divine feminine energy, which is being patient and grounded and secure and stable your root chakra is also out of alignment but remember this is a collective reading you may have these chakras out of alignment or there may be other ones or you have all seven out of alignment okay <clears throat> tourmaline will help with this so get some tourmaline and selenite to help with your root chakra and your crown chakra seven is the most divine number it's the most repeated number and all the numbers in the bible Divinity, Christ consciousness. You'll feel a lot more safe when you are more focused on that, keeping your eyes on God. There's also this energy of the third party person, the karmic. You feel like the karmic is going to ruin everything, that they're going to win. They don't win. Whoever's thinking that, no. If this is your God-ordained spouse and it's not your ex-whatever, this connection is protected. You are safe. You are secure. But you have to feel that within yourself too. Okay? If there's a karmic person here that's interfering with this, let the masculine handle it. Because some people... Or some of you are getting too hung up on karmic readings or something. Yes, I do them, but mine are very, very different. Very different. And some of you are getting misinformation probably about the karmic, or it's 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 um, fueling your fire in a negative way. <clears throat> okay, it's causing the barrier, the block. You need to understand that you are safe. You're struggling to feel rooted in Mother Earth. To be grounded, to be connected to your feminine energy. Mother God is Mary Magdalene. Mother Earth is feminine energy. You really need to trust in God more with this connection and in your own self. This is also for the others of you when speaking your truth, you're afraid. It's kind of like I'm hearing some of you are thinking like, 
like what happened to John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. <coughs> the beheading and the crucifixion. Wow, what I'm being told is that God has done, Jesus and John the Baptist and all these other people, they've, they've, they've fulfilled that prophecy. You are going to be safe when you speak your truth. Now, I can't guarantee anything where something like harm or whatever will come to you. That's not what I'm getting, but there could be just some strong opposition. Okay? But again, when you go full frontal, like in my Gemini energy, when you go out there and really speak your truth, and this is also about you speaking your truth to your masculine, assertiveness, not aggression. Please use discernment. Understand the difference between the two. <coughs> okay? Queen of Swords is also discernment. When you're speaking your truth, you are always protected because truth is of the divine. Some of you may literally not feel safe where you are in a living environment. Go to God about this and change your environment. That could be part of the third party situation. You're living with a third party. Top of the deck. Thank you. To my spirit team. Because look what's at the top of the deck. It is patience. The heart chakra. When your heart chakra is fully activated and fully cl free, clean and clear, you have patience. That's why I talked about my masculine has not responded to that letter in almost three years. But I'm not worried about it anymore. I've been getting other stuff that's way more valuable than the freaking response to that letter. And I know in due time, he will come forward. When God says he is ready, when we're both ready for that truth to come out. Look at the hourglass. Sands of time. Days of our lives. Like hours, what's like sands through the hourglass or the days of our lives. Fast paced. Right? When you look at an hourglass, what happens? Oh, crap. Is it supposed to be a minute? Sometimes it's an hour, right? Yeah, hourglass, but some of them are smaller. Where did the sand go? Then you turn it around. Again, I need more. Okay, let's do it again. Where did the sand go? You turn it back over again. What? What is that doing to you? It's not helping you. Stop worrying about the timing of this. Divine timing. It's God's plan, not yours. <coughs> not mine, not your masculine's. God's plan, God's timing. You're struggling with being patient. You're struggling with looking at how many years it's been, how many months it's been, maybe even how many weeks. God does not know what that is. He's looking at me with this quizzical look on his face. Jess, what is that? What are you talking about? Years? I know that I don't, it doesn't exist for me anymore. I will only talk about it because some of you are still stuck in the 3D world with regards to timing. There's no hourglass in God's world, feminines. That heart chakra, a lot of you still need some heart chakra work. You try to manipulate something, control the masculine, whatever, because you lost patience. You actually did a disservice to the rest of us. Now, this is not to be condescending. This is speaking truth, but you can bounce back from this. This is a lesson for you to learn not to do it going forward because you will repeat the same karmic patterns with the Wheel of Fortune. You are trying to control... Oh, the Wheel of Fortune is not there anymore, but we saw it. Some of you are trying to control your fate, you control your destiny, control the timing of this. You cannot. You cannot. That is not part of you, your mission, your life, your plan, period. It does not say anywhere in your contract that the divine feminine has control over the timing. It's like that ad that says, guaranteed, six weeks. That does not exist. No one on this planet can tell you you can come into union in any amount of time. That is not under their control, period. It is under God's control. 
And one of the toughest things for a feminine to have is patience. Mary Magdalene was incredibly patient with Christ, with the disciples, with everything that happened in her journey, her mission. Which is why when I said, I remember saying in my live that I've been in my connection for seven and a half years and someone said, oh my God, you have an incredible amount of patience. Mary Magdalene. It was already within me. I was always patient since I was a kid. And I remember when I took my grandparents with the wheelchairs and stuff and when we had the cancel flight and everything and you know, they're elderly. Helping my, I took care of my grandmother, my son took care of my grandfather. And my grandmother's the slower of the two. And she needs to do things a certain way. She needs to take her time. Do you know how much of a bitch I would have been if I'm trying to rush my own grandmother to hurry up in the bathroom or do this or do that? Wow. Some of you are kind of coming that from that place. You're trying to rush all these things. We talked about that. Eight of Wands. You can't rush this, guys. No matter what you do, it backfires time and time again and you're adding more karma to your karmic debt by trying to manipulate this, by trying to take control of the wheel when you need to let God, let Jesus take the wheel because they are in full control of this connection, not you. A lot of you really have to do some serious heart chakra clearing, guys. And it's not just listening to sulfagio frequencies and eating green foods and doing all these meditations. It's way more than that. That's why my chakra healing really gets down to the bottom of what needs to be cleared out. I mean specific instructions that God gives me, whether it's through oracle or tarot or through mouth. This needs to be completely healed before you're ready for union with self, which then you'll be ready for um, union with your person, the permanent union, okay? Stay in the present moment. Stop worrying about the future. Stop more thinking about the past. Be in the now. The world has a hard time with patience. It's not just a feminine collective. A lot of people do. We talked about the Amazon Prime Microwave Society. And I will be completely honest with you, doing my mission work, everything that I've built, I've worked so hard to build what I built. I built my own Patreon site. I built my own website and it's different from everybody else's. I'm a, a very intelligent innovator. My moon's in Aquarius. I'm Gemini sun. I said that before and I do things incredibly differently. I think outside the box and I come up with things that other people have come up with and I get frustrated because then people look at it like, what the hell? That's so different. Nobody else is doing that. I don't get it. I'm not using it. I'm not listening or whatever. And I thought by this time around, like things would be different with business, my channel, whatever. At some point it took off and it just dropped off a little bit. I'm pretty sure I was being tested with my patience. Good things come to those who wait. This is seven of pentacles energy. Good things take time. Everything happens in divine timing, nature's timing, God's timing. God knows when I am ready to take off or when things are going to change where things are going to be moving more there's going to be more progress this is also a message for me because sometimes like the other day i got caught up in this and when i asked for guidance with my daily crystal card i got the patience card and i said but wait a minute i've been so patient in my connection and everything else god and they got then they said to me jess this has to do with your mission work.
Your hard work is going to reap the benefits, Jess. you got to be more patient. We're still training you. You're still working on some things. We're still preparing you for what's to come when you are ready for the next whatever it is. For me, the patience now is with the work that I do. And I'm so ambitious. My Leo is rising. My North Node is rising. I've got this fire energy. It's like, I just want to... Oh, I'm so passionate about this. I want this to go out to everybody and their grandmother. Because my messages are so important. And it irks me sometimes because I have strong masculine energy in my chart. With regards to the top three, sun, moon, rising are all masculine energy. Two air, one fire. North node is fire. So it's like my purpose is fire. I get fired up. And I just want, I just want this to get out. I want people to be enlightened. I want people to inspire, to get inspired because, because I'm so mission focused. I'm here for a reason and I want people to heal. I want people to catch wind of this stuff so we can get going as a collective. But my guides are like, they're telling me that just you know, chill out a little bit, slow down. We know, they know how passionate I am about what I do, but they're like, We've got a time, they're telling me this right now, we've got a time and a place, Jess, for when things will shift for you. But I'm hearing it now. We got to make sure that you're fully ready to go. And this is my mission work. The patience with my person and my connection, I've never had a problem with that. At the beginning, I kind of did, yes. But now I'm like, I told you, I haven't, I don't communicate with my person Okay, that's fine. Now I'm like, I want my stuff to really get going here. I'm excited about what I'm about to do. And my guides are like, hold up, Jess. So others of you, it could be about your own mission work, just like me. But such a struggle, feminines, with the patience here. You don't want a half-baked cake when you put it in the oven. Because when you rush, when you try to force, when you're trying to like, okay, I, I got to get this, this has to go now, it has to happen now. You run the risk of making mistakes, which some of you have already done and that's okay. You're here to learn. I've been there too. I'm not a saint. Not right now in this lifetime. I don't know why they're telling me that, but that's besides the point. I've been in that energy where I'm trying to kind of like push, not push, but, you know, I was, I was trying to kind of get my mass into like, you know, hey, talk to me, whatever type of thing. I wasn't forceful, but I thought like me being very giving and responding to everything that he said, he was going to do the same in return. That's not how it works. Because first of all, the divine masculine, the masculines have a different love language. But anyway, patience is a virtue. It's so cliche, I know. <coughs> but again, you rush, you make mistakes. And then when you're ready for the big time or whatever else, you repeat the same karmic pattern and you got to start over in a sense. You got to repeat the lesson and you got to learn the lesson again or try to learn the lesson. Right? Don't repeat the same cycles. Don't repeat the same mistakes. Make the mistake, learn from it, move on. I have a client who's kind of, she's gotten that now. And I told her, you're going to go through this again. And your guides are telling you to remember what happened, what you did so that you don't repeat it. Because you will be tested again to see if you're going to pass the quality check. And some of you feminines have done that. You've been patient. You stayed grounded. You've released those third party things. You've learned to have more patience. And I know for me, just with my mission work and what I'm doing, I've been learning to have more patience with that. 
And I got to be in the present moment. I got to be like, okay, I'm here for mission. I'm here to teach. I'm here to inspire. I'm here to enlighten. Enlighten. Let me just focus on that on every given day and I'll be golden. Whatever happens tomorrow happens. Whatever God wants me to do, it's God's, God's will. Thy will be done. Right? We all need to have patience. One way, shape, or form. So I'm pulling the Divine Feminine Oracle Guidebook by Megan Watterson. This is an incredibly powerful deck. If Mary Magdalene or Mother Mary or something comes out, I'm going to crap my pants. Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, playing Syrians, please real test for highest good. What is the guidance for this Divine Feminine Collective? Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, playing Syrians, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. What guidance do we have for this feminine? Wow. Oh my God. It almost took out the other light in the opposite direction in front of Archangel Raphael. He is the heart chakra angel, right? The healer. He's all about heart chakra. So is Samuel. We saw the heart chakra with patience. He's about patience too. When we have compassion and love for people, we also have patience. Okay. Anudwana, the high priestess. I am one with my soul, and my soul is a legacy of love. Maybe somebody looks like this. I have a feeling one of you resembles this person, the face that's in this picture here. You are one with your soul. You are the high priestess. Trust in your intuition. She is all about patience. She has this inner knowing. Okay. I understand what I got to do. She's also very connected to God. Very connected to her higher self. Her guides, her angels. She listens and she trusts her intuition. And she stays silent when she needs to be. And she just stays in a state of peace and balance. Diana, because High Priestess in the Tarot is number two. <coughs> peace, balance, harmony. Queen of the Wilderness. Maybe your name is Diana. If your name's Diana, this is a huge reading for you. The language of the natural world is a frequency of love. This is my mother tongue. Okay. Somebody's mother's name is Diana. I'm hearing Princess Diana. Two. She's here. Wow. I was not expecting that. Saraswati, the goddess of self knowledge. The essence of who I am flows effortlessly into everything I create. Okay, guys. <clears throat> I didn't crap my pants, but I guess these are the more prominent energies. But Mother Mary and um, Magda, Mary Magdalene are here. <clears throat> oh, how funny. They said, Jess, look at the book cover. There she is. That is Mary Magdalene. Told you. Okay. This is all in a weird look. I looked at the Mary Magdalene one. She's the first one in this book. Da, 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 da. Oh, they want me to read Diana first? Okay. 190. And yes, I read the book because my guides tell me to, because there are insightful messages here. I could totally be like most other people and not read from the book, but I am not that reader. 
I am not that channeler. I am not that light worker. Again, this is no judgment. I am just calling it as it is. Diana represents the call to embody a more primal connection to the wilderness that exists within. The goddess Diana was worshipped in the ancient Roman religion that originated in Italy. She is the daughter of Jupiter and Latana, born on the island of Delos with her twin brother Apollo, god of the sun. The temple of Diana in Rome dates back to the 6th century B BC. Jupiter is the Wheel of Fortune card, by the way. She was the protectress and patroness of the lower class and slaves who would seek sanctuary in her temples. The temple to Diana in Ephesus, also attributed to the Greek goddess Artemis, was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It took 222 years to build. And the magnificent statue of Diana, covered in breasts, symbolizes her worship as a fertility goddess for women. Paul, in the Acts of the Apostles, in the New Testament, mentions Diana's temple since her following was extensive and seen as a threat to Christianity. Some of you are an incarnation of Diana. The most famous place to worship Diana was in the sacred grove of oak trees on the shores of Lake Nemi near Rome. Out in nature, connected to the earth and to the wild animals that roam freely across it, here she is the huntress with her golden bow and arrows. She is the independent, free-spirited goddess who communes with the moon, the natural world, and all who cannot speak for themselves. Hold on a second. Goddess is self-knowledge. They had me move the deck. The safe card fell off the deck. There's the self right there. Self-knowledge, crown chakra, that's high priestess energy. <clears throat> when your soul selects her card. Sometimes the answer is the simple elemental need to just walk barefoot in the grass or even better the mud coming up from the mud lotus i talked about grounding right sometimes we get so caught up in what's happening or what isn't happening that we forget to just be being in the present moment we forget that there is tremendous power surging up from the earth wanting to take whatever energy is no longer serving us we forget that we can commune with the trees those ancient protectors and elders whose language comes with the help of the wind and the slow soft caress that touches our cheek Answers sometimes need to come from the basic desire of the body to feel grounded here on Earth. Diana is associated with fertility, the phases of the moon, and the ability to communicate with animals. Of course, not with any human language, but with the frequency of love and intention, with animals, which animals perceive. If we open ourselves up to it, we can connect to the wisdom in the natural world, even if we live far from it, even if we're deep in the heart of the busiest city. A sign on a bus a logo on a t-shirt, or a card someone sends us may carry an image of the animal that wants to reach us, or we may be visited by a possum on the fire escape or a hawk on a window ledge. We don't have to be in the wilderness to access the wisdom of the natural world. The wilderness is within us. We are a part of it. There's so much more we can receive from the wordless life all around us. Wordless life all around us. We, have, we just have to develop that heart that can hear it. So your meditation is... What spirit animal has medicine or a message to give me in this moment? And your intention setting is, feminines, the language of the natural world is a frequency of love. This is my mother tongue. Okay. I was also just tur tur told. Somebody taking a turd. Who knows? I was just told to make sure you like this video. You share it with other people, not just women, okay? And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe because you're a big part of something huge if you've come this way, if you landed in my sector of the universe, okay? I also want to mention, I do personal divine feminine check-ins that are similar to this, but they are deeper than this. And remember, this is a collective reading. If you want to do a check-in for yourself, I highly recommend you go to capellawellness.com. I'll put in the description box below a link to straight to the service, to the reading. Um, it's well worth the investment. And I highly recommend, if you so choose, if you can, to get a check-in every month. These are going to help you before your specific journey 
we look more into stuff because a lot of the stuff that I cover in the personals are part of the extended, but then even more so if you get a personal check-in done because we are working on you, right, to help the collective because not everything here is going to resonate, right? Um, so there's Diana, and now we're going to look at um, Enudwana, <clears throat> the high priestess. Who she is. Enudwana embodies the ability to become one with her soul to live out her highest purpose. Born in Mesopotamia during the Akkadian Empire around 2025 BCE, Enidwana is considered not only the first known female poet, but also the first named literary author in history. It is believed that Enidwana was the daughter of the Sumerian king Sargon of Akkad. She was given the title of En, which signified her tremendous political power. Sargon of Akkad named her the high priestess of the most important temple in Sumner. And she was charged with the lofty task of melding the Sumerian gods and goddesses with the Akkadian ones to create stability in the empire. Edwana composed 42 hymns. Her most famous works were titled The Exaltation of Inanna and the Sumerian Temple Hymns. Her hymns were copied and used long after her death and considered immensely valuable, equal to the inscriptions of kings. She's credited with creating the structure of poetry, psalms, and prayers that were then used throughout the ancient world. Her hymns influenced and inspired the prayers and psalms of the Hebrew Bible and the Homeric epics. It is believed that Edwana reached a semi-divine status in her lifetime and that she was considered to be the embodiment of the Sumerian goddess Inanna. <clears throat> when your soul selects her card. Over 4,000 years ago, the high priestess Edwana wrote in the exaltation of Inanna, Most precious lady, beloved by An, your holy heart is great. And in the Sumerian temple hymns, Whatever enters you is unequaled, whatever leaves endures. She is a limitless love and the inexhaustible power that moves through us when we merge with the soul. We each have a personal myth. We each have an Ishta Deva, a personal deity who inspires and compels us to bring heaven right here on earth by moving us with the fierce conviction that we're divinely led. Ahedwana encourages us to integrate our light and our dark, to bring our unconscious aspects of self into consciousness. The high priestess is often described as the guardian of the unconscious. She is that aspect in all of us that holds the veil of awareness that separates us from our inner depths. And Edwana is about merging the awareness of our soul and all the love and power it gives us with our individual personality or ego. What Swiss psychologist Carl, what? What Swiss psychologist Carl Jung would call personality one and personality two. And Edwana wants you to live and breathe your soul. She wants you to become so intimate with it that there is no longer any separation. Some of you were literally separated from your higher selves completely. And there are no more excuses or apologies for how powerful you are. You are the high priestess. You are this eternal, she whispers. Your holy heart is this legendary. Some of you are going to be legendary. I talked about world famous, very well known, right? Your meditation is what allows me to experience the reality of my soul. And your intention is I am one with my soul and my soul is a legacy of love. Again, with that heart chakra energy. Now I'm going to reset a swati because that is important. Eighty. Eighty might be significant for somebody here. You were born in 1980? Oh, that's kind of funny. Because I was born in 1980. Okay. I'm one with my soul. Okay. The language of the natural world, the natural world only speaks truth, does it not? Who she is, Saraswati, represents the self-knowledge of who we are so that nothing impedes the flow of creativity from the soul. Her name is a fusion of Sanskrit words for essence in oneself. Saraswati's name translates then as the one who leads to the essence of self-knowledge. She is a part of the Hindu goddess trinity, the Tridevi, together with Parvati and Lakshmi. All three goddesses help the trinity of Hindu gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, to create, maintain, and regenerate the 
universe. The earliest mention of Saraswati is in the Rig Veda, a collection of ancient sacred texts that date back to 1500 BCE. She is sometimes referred to as the mother of the Vedas and is understood to be the personification of knowledge. Students appealed to her for assistance on exams and writers and artists prayed to her to remove all the obstacles that keep them from being a clear conduit for the creativity that she wants to come through them. That wants to come through them. She is considered to be a river goddess or a feminine deity with healing flowing waters. She is venerated as a goddess of music, the arts, and learning because of this association with waters that heal and purify. Her in her icon her iconography often associates her with a white lotus, symbolizing the purity of wisdom her energy brings. We have a pink lotus, but it's a lotus nonetheless. When your soul selects her card, when we are aligned with the essence of who we are, then what needs to be communicated through us, whether with words or music or artwork, can flow. When our creativity feels blocked or stagnant, it isn't because the waters have dried up. We might fear this, but the truth is that self-awareness is the key to unlocking our creative flow. When we take the time to return to the essence of who we really are and nurture that essence, we realign again with the river of expression that the soul generates. Saraswati is the reminder that anything we create that purifies us in the process of making it is a blessing. Our art should be judged not on popularity, but on its power to transform us. And some of you guys are artists. Saraswati is a call to return to the essence or something with music. Saraswati is called to return to the essence of our true self. The energy of her card is a charge for more self-knowledge, more awareness of our own unique soul and what our needs are in this moment. She leads us back into that finely attuned space where we can express with ease and grace what the soul desires most to share. And that energy feels like a river moving through us. It heals, it liberates, and it inspires others to return to their own essence as well. Your meditation is... What is one word to describe the essence of my true self, of your true self? The intention, the essence of who I am flows effortlessly into everything I create. You put all of you into the work that you do. Hence, Queen of Swords, your fully, fully true self, not half of it. And you just put it into everything you create and you're in a state of flow. You will also be in a state of peace by doing that. Now, in the extended, which I'm going to do right after this. We're going to talk about how you are feeling towards the masculine right now. How you feel about him or her, okay? Um... We're going to look into what other intentions you need to be setting at this time. Or what intentions you have towards your divine masculine. Let's put it that way. Okay? Um, what you need the most right now in your connection with your masculine we're also going to get some messages from the feminine to the masculine and whatever else comes out. Okay? That's in the extended. I will also, they're now also telling me, I will pull one card from my Divine Masculine deck to see what your masculine wants to say to you in support of you. Um... The link is in the description box below for the extended reading, okay? If you're interested in viewing all of my extended readings on limited access, there is a subscription called the Unlimited Extended Subscription on my website, capellawellas.com, on the Capella Memberships page, okay? It's a one-month subscription, $19.99. You get more bang for your buck. It's all about inspiration and teaching for me. It's not about the money. All right, if you feel you need more guidance, insight, awareness into these readings, go more in depth, really, really, really work on what you need to work on. I highly recommend that you 
uh, purchase that subscription so that you can view all of the extendeds no matter how often you want to view them, okay? Um, what else? There's a link to the subscriptions, the unlimited extended subscriptions as well, okay? We're going to get a message from God, okay? What does the feminine need to trust God with the most at this time? Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, Pleading Series, Mary Magdalene, Christ, thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. You are safe because God's got you. The universe has got you. The Lord is your fortress and your refuge. This came out in my daily reading for today, for July 19th, for my members, my paid memberships. If you're interested in a membership, you can get a plus membership that includes the extended readings as well. If you want to upgrade your membership, if you're a member already, please come to me so we can work it out because Wix has a weird thing when it comes to people upgrading memberships, okay? There's bonus content. My memberships are like Patreon, but I built it on my site because I pay for the web space. Why am I going to use somebody else's web space for something that I can do on my own? So if you're interested in the memberships, again, this came out in the daily. This is putting into the heads of those who are my members. You've got to remember that the Lord is your refuge. God is your refuge. And look what's at the back patience and perseverance have a magical effect before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. John Quincy Adams. What did I say about when we are not patient, we were trying to rush and trying to be quick about everything, trying to force divine timing to happen. Things get messed up because you are interfering with the natural order of things. You are interfering with the divine order of things. God controls everything on this planet, every person on it, everything in the cosmos. It's all G-O-D, not us. So when you try to manipulate, when you try to come into union six weeks, You just screwed up the timeline. But now this is the time to awaken to that, to accept that, go back to doing what a true divine feminine Christ would do and move forward. Stay in the present moment, do you. Let God handle everything else. Let your masculine handle his own journey. You got to pray for him. You got to, you got to be in your light, in your truth to help them. Prayer and everything I just said are key to this. You got to avoid having all these barriers, these obstacles come up because you're trying to rush something. And you're trying to control. Wheel of Fortune energy is fast energy, but when you try to push it, you try to, you repeat the same karmic patterns, you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, you get the same thing. Bottom of the deck, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. There it is again. Refuge twice. You need to trust in God with this. He's got you. You are safe. He is your sanctuary. He is your strength. Your strength in this connection comes from God. Your refuge comes from God. Everything comes from God. Again, High Priestess Energy with the Enudwana card. Get more High Priestess. That's Divine Feminine. All right. Time is now, guys. 
even for those of you who are male, okay, or the masculines who are watching this. Patience. Give everything to God. Ask God to give you the strength to deal with this con connection. This is not for the faint of heart in the least bit, and you know it. Okay. So, what time is it? See, see me? My guides are like, why'd you look at your clock, Jess? All right. My guides are telling me, Jess, we know you have to do the extended for this because it's going to be very important. As I said, if you didn't hear what I said before, the link for the extended is in the description box below. If you go to capelwallace.com, click on the extended video section, you will see the Divine Feminine check-in channel that I have set up. Look at the date, okay, or the month and the year. Watch the extended reading. If you want to watch all of them, get the subscription, okay? Um, we're going to look into, again, how you're feeling about the masculine at this time. What your true intentions are towards the masculine or what intentions you need to set, what other intentions you need to set. What you really are needing from this connection right now, not wanting, needing. And we're also going to see what you have to say to the masculine and what your masculine has to say to you. But I'm only pulling one card because I pull other cards for the masculine check-in readings. If you haven't watched the masculine check-in reading, I highly recommend you watch that. <coughs> right? Now, there is a smaller group of you where things are changing. Divine timing is here for you. Communication is coming in for you because you are in alignment. With all that being said, I was going to do the, the check-in right after this, but my guides are like, Jess, you need to eat. This took a lot of energy. And what I'm being told right now is that what's going to be in the extended is going to take even more energy. So I'm going to take a break. Patience, because I'm ready to go. I'm fired up. I want to keep going with this extended, but it's probably going to be a long one. But my guides are like, Jess, we know you're ambitious. We know you're a go-getter. Do not worry about the timing of this. Do not worry about getting it done. You now need to take care of you. Remember the balance. I did my mission work. Now it's time to take care of me, and then I'll go back to it. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. But either way, the extended is already going to be there by the time you watch this. Okay? So I look forward to seeing you there. If you have any issues with accessing it or anything at all, please reach out to me and let me know so I can rectify it. Um, if you are interested in Divine Feminine Check-In reading, Light Counterpart check-in reading, Divine Masculine check-in reading, by all means, go to capelwallace.com, check out the links in the description box. I do have packages for the Divine Feminine and for the Divine Masculine. They're understanding the Divine Feminine and understanding the Divine Masculine packages. One's a plus package, one is not. There's two different packages for the Feminines, two for the Masculines. Those are multiple readings that I put in a package where you save money if you decide that you want more than one reading pertaining to better understanding your journey as a divine feminine and better understanding your masculine and vice versa all right at capellawallace.com there's a category in the header typed typed entitled uh capella tarot reading packages click on that it will show you all the packages that i offer to include coaching packages okay to include personal reading packages where you get the recorded readings. You have like three recorded readings and you save money. It may very well be worth the investment, feminines. All right? Any questions at all, please let me know. I don't want any bullshit questions. I want honest, truthful questions about your journey and about what you need guidance with, additional guidance with, all right? Okay, guys. I honestly gotta go eat something to prepare me for the extended. Um, and uh, but either way, you guys can jump on to that. <laughs> By the time you watch this, I do appreciate those of you who are still here. If you had the amount of patience to listen to everything that I channeled, 
to get your guidance, to get whatever it is you need to get out of this reading. I commend you. You are well on your way to building that patience because I'm telling you, God is not just going to plop permanent union in your lap. As I said before, I've been in my journey for seven and a half years. But that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't even know what that is. All I know is that I'm here in the now and I'm in my power. I'm doing my mission work. I'm inspiring, enlightening, motivating people in whatever capacity. That's what I came here to do. That's where God wanted me to be. That's the whole point in this whole connection. The permanent union is the bonus. And God's waiting to see if I'm going to continue on with this, if I'm going to give up. And I've tried to give up many times. I got pulled right back in. And my divine masculine pulls me right back in. Bless his heart. <coughs> okay. So if you're here, permanent union will definitely be for you because you had the patience to watch all two plus hours of this. Because not everybody's going to come into union because of a lot of things that weren't checked off <coughs> on their list. To include the faith piece, the patience piece of this, all of that. Okay? You're well on your way if you're still here. If you still need to work on the patience thing, and the shadow of the Queen of Swords, whatever, you got this. You got this. You have the ability to change things, to rectify things. Take what you learned from that, move forward, and be more in your divine light. Don't dim it by being in that type of energy. Low vibrational energy, all right? Okay, guys, I love you with the love of Christ. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I illuminated your well-being. I usually do my outro, but I usually do that for the, the, the Zodiacs. <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water. Um, it's hard. But it's well worth it. It's well worth the ride. It's well worth the pain. It's well worth the strife. It's well worth the ups and downs. Because what God has for each and every one of you, you just don't know. You just don't know what's coming. Okay. So again, thank you for watching this in its entirety. And it's 2-2-2 two, 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 as I say that. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Love you. Bye.